Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Are you or your team performing all possible vendor validations? Do you know which documents have the key data you need to confirm that the vendor you are about to create or update is real? Be sure by downloading the vendor validation reference list. It also has links to all the resources listed. Download at www. Dot Debra, D E B R A R Richardson, R I C H A R D S O N dot com. During the global shelter in place requirements, were you or your team stuck at home trying to research invoices or complex vendor requests? but the key data you needed was back at the office in your desk files or file cabinets? Well, today I have on the podcast Keith Wozniak, and he's going to talk all about document scanning so that you can be prepared if you have to work remotely again. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 81. Deborah R. Richardson and Keith Wozniak discuss document scanning, a critical part of your business continuity plan. So I found it interesting that Abbott Exchange reported that over 60% of companies have a business continuity plan in place. However, only 37% have the necessary technology to enable employees to work from home as part of that strategy. And further, only 22% have a plan that can sustain their business for more than two months. And that may be concerning to you, especially now as this episode is being recorded during the pandemic. Either now or when everyone returns back to the office, business continuity, disaster recovery plans may be created or revised. And how to handle access to documents for accounts payable will definitely be at the top of the list. So today I have with me Keith Wozniak from Tier 5 to talk about the options that you have. Welcome, Keith. Well, thank you, Deborah. I really appreciate that. Thanks for the opportunity to, to come on your podcast and talk about this. This is a really especially important in today's world, you know, which is pretty much upside down from what it was even just a month ago. And, and who knows what it's going to look like in a month. But we do know that, uh, yeah, that there are some certain business strategies that, you know, have to be changed. Yes, and I definitely agree with you on that. So can we start with you telling the audience just a brief introduction of your background and then also of Tier 5? Yes, thanks, Deborah. Tier 5 Solutions Group is a document imaging and scanning services company. We also provide document scanning and imaging hardware, software, We're also the largest Canon dealer uh, sales and service on the West Coast. I personally have about 25 years or so of document imaging solutions experience, and that is across a wide range of businesses and industries and uh, even the different various groups within the enterprise, uh, AP included. You know, I know you guys offer a lot of services, but in regards to document scanning, my listeners are, you know, the accounts payable, the AP team members. And when we think of scanning, you know, we think of invoices that come in via U.S. mail. But, you know, when we dig deeper into AP, especially in the vendor maintenance, 
we could be talking about, you know, vendor supporting documentation that we receive, hard copy, um, copies of contracts, insurance certificates, um, that one's a big one, or even, you know, all those boxes that we gave to a storage company and, you know, then we order, order back whenever we need them. So, you know, as we're, you know, working through this pandemic, what other AP documents are relative to AP that you see being scanned or that your company has been contacted about? Yeah, that definitely those documents that you were talking about are all critical documents that need to be in electronic form. Other paper-based information um, for the accounts payable uh, have to do with uh, shipping tickets, manifests, signed PODs, uh, anything having to do with the three-way matching process, getting those into electronic forms and into the AP process is, is very important. Yeah, and you know, with this pandemic and some accounts payable teams working 100% remotely, some not 100% because they have tasks like check payments or those mailed invoices we just talked about. And so they've got to now send team members into the office, you know, still practicing that social distancing, of course. But what have you seen as a response to the significant increase in remote work is tier five's phone kind of ringing off the hook is it one that's seen a spike in business because of the fact that there's not an easy option to get access to those um, hard copy documents anymore that's a great question and, and the answer is yes we have seen a significant uptick in inquiries about getting documents into the hands of remote workers we got a call just a couple of days ago from a local private college that said everybody in our department need access to uh, student files, and they're all in filing cabinets at the campus, and the campus is completely locked down. And another customer that called in said they have a person that every time there's a document request, this one person goes to the office, runs inside, pulls the file, scans it on their multifunction peripheral, on their printer scanner, uh, emails it to the person who requested it, and this person is doing this eight, nine, 10, you know, 20 times a day. So wow. the answer, yeah, is definitely we've seen an uptick in business and inquiries about that. Yeah, and you know, I believe that. And they're very dedicated, especially in AP as well, dedicated workers that are willing to do what needs to be done to get the job done. So let's say we've got, you know, an AP team, they're coming back to work. They know they need a plan because they felt all the pain points, right, of having not having access to digital records. So they know those pain points. They know they're going to be updating their or creating that business continuity or disaster recovery plan. And business continuity, Tier five even has like a page dedicated to that. So if an AP listener contacted you today and said, we need hard copy records scanned, what is that process? How long will it take? What is their level of effort? And I'm just thinking about those file cabinets, you know, those boxes of records on site and off site. It kind of seems overwhelming. Is the process overwhelming? Uh, the answer is yes and no. Um, it's the answer is no if you're a company like us that does the document scanning services, a complete turnkey solution. Sounds like a commercial. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, we have the processes and the experience to come in, box up your files, take them back to our center, get them scanned through uh, high-speed production quality scanners, and get them back to you in electronic form in a pretty quick manner. If we have other customers that decide they just they want to purchase a scanner and do it themselves, that's fine. Uh, a lot of times that ends up, they are only doing a handful of the documents that are produced from that day forward. Uh, so their back file is growing and growing. So it, it can be overwhelming if, if you are trying to do it yourself, um, but it can be less than overwhelming. And I can tell you exactly what happens. What, yeah. you know, if we receive a call, we do an assessment of your needs, we find find out the, the basics of your requirements. We'll get any questions answered. Uh, we'll find out what your turnaround time and requirements are. Uh, we'll come out, we'll get the documents, get them boxed up if necessary, um, take them back to our facility, and then get them scanned and converted and then back in electronic form. 
let's say we go through that step. Um, we go through the initial steps. You get everything scanned. You give them back to us in, in, in electronic form. Is the goal at that point from that moment on for the accounts payable team to change your processes to accept more electronic versions of documents or will it always be a point where we'll have to reach out to tier five maybe in some type of recurring schedule and have you continuously um, digitize the hard copies that we've gotten in what's the normal process well, most of our customers are actually re uh, repeat business, uh, okay. and we do business with them on a recurring basis. Uh, some are weekly, some are uh, monthly, some is uh, some are quarterly too. Uh, but yeah, we are in it for a long-term relationship with the customer. And the customer, as long as they're happy with us, will you know, continue to use us and uh, keep digitizing their records for them. So as they get in these hard copies, they can send them to tier five and you will digitize those and that process just keeps um, recurring as long as they have hard copies coming in. Exactly, okay. exactly. So is this more for, let's say it's a typical day in accounts payable and we're getting in, you know, mail just came in. And so we got in, I don't know, a hundred invoices. Is this for that? process or is this once we've keyed in and processed the invoice then we send that in for long-term storage or for um, to digitize it so that if we need to pull it up again we can is that how it's used uh, it, it kind of works both ways um, you can use the images uh, integrated with your whatever financials you know in your ERP system uh, in your accounts payable system. If you want to use those on an active basis, on a workflow basis, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. Um, you know, we can provide tools to allow you to do that. Uh, but it all goes to, it also goes to the other side of the spectrum where it's just pure storage and retrieval and archive. Um, and we have a lot of customers that, that choose to do that as well. Okay, I see what you're saying. So let's say if an accounts payable team did want to use it for, you know, those invoices that come in through the mail, they could um, use your equipment to scan that uh, those documents in and then attach those documents maybe to their ERP so that they can, you know, have a digital image of the invoice. So that's what you meant before when you said a client could scan it in themselves or they can send it in for tier five to scan in. One being, this is our process so we can do our daily processing and that's the scanning in themselves using your equipment. And then the other being, this is long-term storage for like insurance certificates and we'll send that to you and you'll scan it and then it'll be accessible if we need it in the future. That Yeah, exactly right. Is that that's it? A, okay. <laughs> that is well, well stated. Yeah, exactly. And, and okay. in terms of the long-term storage and access to the documents outside of the enterprise, outside of your business. We can provide you with a link, basically just a, a link to a website where you are authenticated, where the security happens. And once you're inside the system, then you can search for your, say your vendor contracts or vendor maintenance file documents, and then access them that way on a long-term basis. I was going to ask you about that too. So you're saying once the records and documents are scanned, let's say we have an APT member working remotely, right? Because we put our business continuity disaster plan, we've implemented that. And so we've got someone working, you know, from home one or two days per week or per month so that we can test it. And that person needs to access one of the images that has been scanned in. The steps are, is that they would go to, you mentioned a site or a portal sign in, be authenticated, and they will be able to retrieve that document. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk a bit about the way in which they retrieve it? Like, what is the search like? Because I've seen some storage programs that, you know, it's that the search is a little bit hard and you have to know like exactly what to search for in order to pull up that document. Else it's going to look like it's not there. So what type of search capability does the software have? Well, we'll give you the ability to search for either structured index fields. And all that means is you tell us ahead of time, what do you normally use to search for a particular document? Is it vendor number? Is it voucher number? You know, and we can set that up. We can have our data entry people key those in so that these are fully searchable fields. But in addition to that, we also do optical character recognition, which simply takes, it's a computer software that looks at a scanned image and 
and translates that into searchable text. Basically, picture a, a, a JPEG file compared to a Word document. You can't search a JPEG picture file, but you can search a Word document. We provide that capability too, so that if you're looking for a specific keyword that might not have been typed in by your data entry people, yeah. um, you can still access something that way. Great. So if we search by a keyword or a phrase that's within the document, that document will still come up, even if that we is, don't know the name. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. All right. So you talked a little bit about security. So as part of the controls, you know, I'm all about reducing fraud. And one of the issues is, you know, security of sensitive information. And I'm always talking about, you know, uh, vendor sensitive information on the vendor record, such as the tax ID, which in some cases can be a, a social security number, or, you know, even banking details. And ERPs do have the ability to limit access to that sensitive information. And some of it is role-based. And uh, some of them even have the access to mask you know, some of that data except for the last four or five digits. So that least privileged access and the ability to mask are key parts of security in the ERPs. So how does Tier 5 ensure that least privileged access from within a client's company and then also between your clients? How do you ensure security and that least privileged access? Well, we will mimic whatever your ERP system, whatever security measures are in your ERP system to allow role-based uh, document access. You can set up within our software the same types of things, giving people access to certain documents, document redaction if necessary to cover up a tax ID number if necessary. We kind of give you all of those, all of those capabilities built into our software. But again, we'll we'll mimic or provide whatever you currently have in terms of document security, either electronic or paper, within the electronic document on our side. If I heard you correctly, you do have the ability to limit who can access specific documents. Yes. Okay, and that's good because we want the accounts payable vendor team to be able to see the W-9, but we don't need anyone else to see it in the company, so that's perfect. So what I was trying to get to with the between your clients was you oh. have a separate like database or server or something for each client. We never have ever had an issue with, with a client accidentally seeing another client's uh, documents or data. That, that has never happened. And the reason that hasn't happened is because of the security measures that go on. The ones that are built into our software, the ones that our database administrators provide, and then also the security physical security at our data center. I believe different customers are on their own virtual machines, and that just means they're separated, not physically, but the data is, is completely inaccessible between two different clients. So again, that's that's physically built into and all built into the system as well as built into the, at the software level. Just kind of extending that security topic out a little bit more. I forgot to ask, we talked earlier about, you know, we have these boxes of records and we're going to give them to tier five to digitize. What do you do with those hard copies? Uh, how do you destroy those? Uh, it's up to the customer, really. Uh, yeah. we, can, we can return the documents. Um, most often we will store those on site for about 90 days at no charge. Um, we can store them for longer uh, for a small charge. Um, or we can shred them, and it, it's really up to the customer. Uh, usually when a customer just starts, they are looking for a certain level of comfort with the scanned images as opposed to the paper. Uh, but once they've used the system for a couple of months, uh, they're used to accessing the images, they're used to finding what they're looking for, then they say, okay, you know what, after they're scanned, go ahead and just shred them. Okay, so that's great. A lot of good information on digitizing documents for that business continuity disaster recovery plan. So where can the audience go to connect with you and then to find more information on Tier 5? Well, they can contact me uh, directly at, I'll give you the phone number, it is 714-396-7080. Uh, we are based in California, but we have coverage throughout the country, uh, mainly on the Western United States. But again, I can be reached anytime at 714-396-7080. Okay. And 
happy to take any calls. If anybody just has questions too, I'm, I'm here. Um, to just consider me kind of an, an asset for you. So. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, thanks, Keith. Uh, thanks for being on the podcast today. And maybe we'll have you back once we get out of this whole pandemic and talk business continuity again. I would really appreciate that. And thanks, Deborah. Really appreciate the chance to talk to you and really enjoyed this time that we had together. Everybody stay safe and uh, we'll get through this. So thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Keith Wozniak on the 81st episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Thank you.